So welcome back friends. Today you are in luck. Finally, we will be testing the strangest axe ever made, the American built Chopper 1. So let's take a look at this very unusual splitting axe. I was a little surprised when I did a little research on this. First off, this is not a product endorsement from the company. I don't have any affiliation with them. This was sent to me by my good friend Ken, uh, who just, uh, actually, without a doubt, this is the most requested video uh, that I recall in, in recent memory. I, I don't know there has been like a recent resurgence, resurgence of interest in this axe. Um, anyway, so as I was doing a little research on this, I had seen these before years ago, and I thought that it was a very, very old design because I saw vintage models of this for sale on eBay and different places. So when I looked into it, I found out it was actually invented in 1975. Uh, by a guy in his backyard uh, who was trying to find a better way. Of course, you know, everyone has always tried to find an easier way of splitting firewood. And he came up with this very unique design. Sold it in major department stores for years and years. And I think in the late 80s, just quit doing it. And with the resurgence of the interest in, or the internet and interest from folks, um, he got back into the business and he's producing it again. So you can buy these things brand new as well as replacement parts, handles, all of those things on his website. I was surprised. I thought it was just a vintage thing from days gone by, but it's not. It's really not that old. So what is it for and how does it work? Well, if you look here, it's got these two spring-loaded arms that as the blade of the axe enters the round, it's supposed to flip out and blast those pieces of that cord would apart to, to, to crack those and to split those apart and, and to shoot them out and give you more force. Well, does it work? Is this, is this a legitimate tool or is this a, another gimmick like so many of these splitting devices that have come across that we've all seen? No punches will be pulled on the chopper one test. We have a very gnarled and mean piece of ponderosa pine here. It's so mean it wouldn't even burn. I had to drag it out of the slash pile with my tractor. Look, it's all covered in char. It's fireproof. It couldn't even be touched by that. So we'll take a couple rounds out of here with the saw and see what happens when we turn the chopper one loose on it. Man, that saw is a demon. Demon. Big, nasty, heavy, gnarled, wet wood. Old. Okay, now we got a good chopping block. I think we're ready for the chopper one. You guys ready? Okay, so I even took the moment to read the chopper one instructions and it said rather than go in the traditional pie method that it works best to uh, do the sides, to work around the sides and then split the middle in half. Um, that's fine. So what we're looking for today is a couple things is uh, well, does it split obviously does it get stuck in the wood? How's it feel to swing? How's the weight feel and and is it effective and how does it hold up? So we'll just jump into it. You guys ready? We'll get some slow motion a couple slow motion ones going here in a minute. All right, let's see over the head Take a look at that So this is very interesting. So look what happened here. So as the axe went in, the wings did engage here. However, they came out too soon and they prevented the axe from going in any further. Look at that, they're just, they've just, they're stopped up hard against the wood. Why did they deploy early? See, look at that, look at that. Oh, I see, okay. so. It just didn't go in deep enough. So this is what it's supposed to do. So look, there's a there's a lip on there. So that is supposed to prevent that from going in any further. And then this portion here engages, pushes it out. Okay, let's let's try that again here, up close. See if I can hit the same spot. Oh, all right, that worked pretty good. All right, we're learning together here. Learning together. All right, let's see. Okay. Pretty good. 
Obviously, we're gonna have to do another video with a regular maul on the same piece to see, but so far so good. Keep going here. It's a heavy axe. Blast it apart. Really does. I have to say, I was a little surprised. I wasn't looking for it to fail, but you know how this stuff is sometimes. Okay. Interesting. Let's do a couple slow motion. So what did we learn today and what's my take on the Chopper 1 axe? Well just looking at it, let's talk about fit and finish a little bit. The fit and finish is actually pretty good. You know, the, the handle, obviously, you know, they were done quickly. Uh, there wasn't, uh, you know, a, a ton of time spent uh, in the hang, but I don't see any problems. It hasn't worked loose so far. I mean, I've had $200 axes that worked loose in the first 15 minutes of use. So. Uh, time will tell on this, but it looks reasonably well put together. Um, it's not super sharp. I didn't do anything to the edge. It's been just been sharpened with a, a coarse grinder, maybe a belt sander or something like that. But it's heavy. Uh, it swings nice. The handle on it is actually very, very nice. It's got a really great Fawn's foot, really traditional classic handle. Uh, I, I couldn't couldn't be more happy with the handle. Uh, great grain orientation on this one is uh, is not correct. Um, and it's covered in varnish, so that's a, a downside, but um, the handle's pretty heavy. Is it going to fail? I don't know. You know, there's, we talk a lot about grain orientation and how important it is. To be honest with you, if I was going to be completely honest, I haven't seen a handle fail that was grain oriented sideways. I've only been told that. You know, sometimes you take things that you hear and just adopt them as gospel. Um, the older I get, the more time, the more, the more I question things, the more I critically think about things like wait a minute is that really true does it make that big a difference um, who knows I don't know uh, it'd be interesting to it's an interesting topic but uh, it's actually very <laughs> very very good it's a heavy it's a heavy axe um, and what I found was I had to swing it pretty hard to originally bust the, those rounds uh, but to, on the other stuff just the weight of it alone I could pretty much just let it fall it was pretty delightful to use it's a little bit strange in that that mechanical um, function that happens you can hear it uh, you can feel it I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable uh, but it is something it's a little bit different there is something a secondary kind of an explosion going on one thing that I think is pretty apparent from the video is that how powerful uh, those flip arms are by the way that it threw the firewood. It really threw the firewood out to one side or the other. So is that a good thing? It's a real good thing when you're working with really um, uh, strainy wood, like uh, like maybe hickory or Douglas fir, for example, where it, it wants to, you know, you have to peel it apart. So having that splitting action, I'd be really interested to see how well this does on a, on a Doug fir round. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in the future when I have the opportunity. Um, downside of that is, is you do have to chase your rounds. You know, they do fly away. So if you have something that you want to split four times, when you hit that, it's going to shoot it a little bit way, a, a little bit far away from your chopping block. That can, all, of course, be mitigated. You can chop inside of a tire or throw a bungee cord around it. You know, we've all seen that stuff before. But I uh, have to say, pretty well put together. Um, and it, it seemed to work really good. Really, really good on this. Next video, I'll do another one on this. We're, we'll put this against what I would consider to be the gold standard of splitting axes, the, uh, the Prandy, as I've named it, the Bismarck, that big old German-looking monster. That is a wood-splitting beast. So we'll uh, put a roundup and we'll go head-to-head -head and see how that goes. But that's going to be uh, that'll be the next video. We're going to be out of time today. But price point on this, 
um, on their website. It looked like it was, I think it was $89. The other thing that was kind of cool though is they sell replacement parts for it. So you could buy springs and pins and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, if you're looking for one, I, I think it's good. I, I wouldn't buy one just yet. Let's wait and see how it does against the Bismarck, the traditional uh, big brute of a monster splitter. Uh, and if it comes out on top, you know, that might be a good option. The price, what did I say? $89, $90. So again, this is not a product endorsement. This was sent to me by a friend of mine who uh, just had a curiosity, wanted to get my take on it. But I have to say that I am pleasantly surprised. It's actually pretty, pretty decent so far. All right, stay tuned. Next video, we'll go head to head with the Bismarck and then we'll really find out what it's made of. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.